advent of Lord Krishna takes back when the world was too much overburdened by the unnecessary defense force of uh, different uh, kings uh, who were actually demons but were posing themselves as royal order. At that time the whole world uh, become per trap and uh, the uh, pre- predominating uh, deity of this earth known as uh, Bhumi uh, went to uh, see Lord uh, Brahma to express our uh, calamities on account of the demonic, demonic uh, kings. The predominating deity of the earth, uh, Bhumi, assumed the shape of a uh, cow, presented herself before Lord uh, Brahma uh, with tears uh, in, his, in her eyes, uh, very much uh, bereaved and weeping just to invoke compassion of the Lord. And uh, she began to narrate the calamitous position uh, of the uh, earth. Lord Brahma, after hearing the narration of uh, Bhumi, became uh, too much uh, aggrieved, and he uh, at once uh, started for the uh, ocean of milk where Lord Vishnu is lying, uh, accompanied by all the demigods, headed by Lord Shiva and others. To me, the predominant deity of earth and the shape of the cow also followed the demigods. Lord Brahma, just arriving on the shore of milk ocean, uh, began to uh, pacify the Lord who uh, for, formerly saved the uh, earthly planet, assuming the uh, transcendental form of Boa. In the Vedic uh, mantra, there is a particular type of prayer called Purusha Sukta. Generally, uh, by chanting that Purusha Sukta, the demigods uh, offers their obeisances to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Vishnu. It is understood herein that the predominant deity of every planet uh, can see the Supreme Lord of this universe, Brahma, whenever there is some disturbance in that uh, planet. And uh, Brahma also can uh, approach the Supreme Lord Vishnu uh, not directly by seeing him, but he can approach him just on, by standing on the uh, ocean, of, on the shore of the ocean uh, of milk. There is uh, a planet uh, within this universe which is Sita uh, Deepa. And in that planet, uh, the ocean is of milk. It is understood uh, in various Vedic literature. Just we have got the ocean of salt water within this planet. Similarly, there are various, kind, various kinds of oceans in other planets. Somewhere there is the ocean of milk, somewhere there is ocean of oil, somewhere there is ocean of liquor, and there are different types of ocean. And Purusha Sukta is the standard prayer uh, reciting which the demigod appeased as the Supreme Personality of God Vishnu, uh, who is uh, lying as Kirodaksai Vishnu. Because he is lying on the milk of ocean, he is called Kirodaksai Vishnu. And this Kirodaksai Vishnu is the uh, Supreme Personality of Godhead through him whom all the incarnation within this universe appears. On offering the Purusha Shakta prayer to the 
supreme personality of Godhead uh, by all the demigods when there was uh, no responsible response uh, apparently heard by the demigods. At that time, Lord Brahma personally uh, sat into meditation and there was transmission of message from Lord Vishnu to Brahma, and Brahma uh, th- thus uh, broadcast the message to the demigods. That is the system of uh, receiving Vedic knowledge. The Vedic knowledge is received first Brahma uh, from the Supreme Personality of Godhead uh, through the uh, medium of heart. As, as it is stated in the beginning of Srimad Bhagavatam, Tene Brahma Rida. Uh, the transcendental knowledge of Vedas was uh, transmitted to Lord Brahma through the heart. Here also, in the same way, only Brahma could understand the message transmitted by Lord Vishnu and he uh, broadcast. Uh, the uh, message to the demigods that they uh, should immediately take action on the message of the Lord. message was that the Supreme Personality of Godhead uh, is going to appear on the earth very soon along with His uh, Supreme Powerful Potencies and so long He would remain on the earth planet for executing uh, his particular mission of annihilating the demons and establishing the devotees, the demigods should also remain there to assist him. They should all immediately go and take birth in the family of Jodhu dynasty, wherein uh, Lord also appeared in due course of time. Next time. The Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna, uh, shall personally appear uh, as the son of uh, Vasudev. Before he appears there, all the uh, demigods, along with their wives, uh, shall uh, appear in different uh, pious families of the world, just to assist the Lord in executing his mission. The exact word used in this uh, correction uh, for the demigod is tapriyatham, uh, which means the demigod should appear on the earth in order to please the law. In other words, any living entity who uh, lives only for satisfying the Lord is a demigod. But, uh, the demigods were also informed that uh, the plenary a portion of uh, Lord uh, Krishna, uh, namely Ananta, who is maintaining the universal uh, planets, uh, extending his millions of uh, woods, he would also uh, appear there before Lord Krishna's appearance. They are also informed that uh, the external potential of Vishnu uh, under whom the, all the conditions are enamored, she would also appear just to execute the purpose of the Supreme Lord. She is already instructed by uh, the personality of Godhead uh, how to uh, appear in order to help him in his uh, mission there. Next word. In this way, Lord Brahma, the father of all prajapatis or progenitor of universal population after instructing uh, and pacifying all the demigods as well as the mahi or the predominating deity of the earth by sweet words departed for his own abode and the highest planetary system called Brahma Loka. 
the leader of the Jadu dynasty, King Surasen, was ruling over the country known as Mathur, or the district of Mathura, as well as the district known as Surasen, according to his own name. In the beginning, he was the ruling prince of that portion of the country. The account of ruling by Surasen, Mathura became the capital uh, city uh, for all the kings of uh, Jadus. Another reason for making Mathura as the capital of the kings of Jadu dynasty was that this family uh, is very vast family and they uh, knew that Mathura is the place where Lord Sri Krishna lives uh, eternally, as much as he lives uh, in Dwarka. Once upon a time, uh, Vasudev, uh, the son of uh, Surasen, after marrying Devaki, was going home on his char- chariot with his newly married wife, the father of Devaki, uh, known as uh, Devak, contributed sufficient dowry uh, at the uh, time of marriage of his daughter on account of his being very much affectionate uh, for his daughter. At the beginning, he uh, contributed one hundred chariots completely decorated with gold and uh, equipments. At that time, Kansa the son of Ugrosan, in order to please his uh, sister Devoki, voluntarily took the uh, reins of the horses of Vasudev's chariot and was uh, driving himself, as it is the custom of Vedic uh, civilization. Uh, according to Vedic uh, civilization, when uh, uh, one girl is married, uh, it is the uh, custom that the brother uh, uh, takes the sister and brother-in-law uh, to his home because the newly married uh, girl may feel too much separation from the father's family. Therefore, the brother uh, goes with her uh, till she reaches uh, her father-in-law's house. Devaki's father, Devak. Uh, gave uh, sufficient dowry uh, to his daughter, uh, which are described as follows, that he contributed 400 elephants uh, fully decorated with uh, golden garlands, similarly uh, decorated uh, 15,000 horses uh, were contributed and 1,800 chariots similarly decorated just to uh, accompany uh, his daughter and uh, arrange 200 beautiful girls to follow uh, his daughter. The Kshatriya system of marriage uh, is still current in India that uh, when a Kshatriya is married along with his wife another uh, few dozens of uh, Young girlfriends of the bride uh, come uh, to the house of the uh, king. Such uh, followers of the queen are called uh, maid servant, but actually uh, they act as friends uh, of the uh, queen. This fact is, is prevalent uh, from uh, time immemorial, at least uh, from the time uh, before the advent of Lord Krishna, that is, uh, 5,000 years ago also the system was current, and thus uh, Vasudev uh, brought home another uh, set of 200 beautiful girls along with his wife, Devaki. Next one. When the bride and bridegroom was uh, passing on on the chariot, there were uh, different kinds of musical instruments uh, playing 
in order to uh, indicate auspicious uh, moment. There were concerts, bugles, drums, kettle drums, all uh, them combined together uh, was uh, vibrating a nice concert. While the procession was uh, passing very pleasingly, and uh, Kansa was driving the chariot, at that time uh, there was a miraculous sound vibrated from the uh, sky, which uh, announced uh, especially uh, to Kansa. Kansa, you are so full, you are uh, driving uh, the chariot of your sister and sis- uh, brother-in-law, but you do not know that the eighth child of this sister uh, will kill you. Next word, Kansa was uh, the son of Ukrasan, which family uh, was known as uh, Bhoja dynasty. And it is said Kansa was the worst of all the Bhoja dynasty king. So immediately after hearing the omen uh, uh, from the sky, he became very much alert and caught hold of the bunch of hair of devotee and was just about to uh, kill her with his sword. Vasudev was astonished by seeing the behavior of Kansa and in order to uh, pacify the cruel, blameless uh, brother-in-law Kansa, Vasudev uh, uh, began to say as follows, great reason and evidences. He said, My dear brother-in-law, Kansa, you are the most famous uh, king of the Bhoja dynasty, and people know that you are uh, the greatest uh, uh, warrior and valiant king, and how uh, it is that you are so much infuriated uh, that you are uh, ready to kill uh, one woman, and especially uh, she is your sister at the auspicious uh, ceremony of her marriage. And why you should be so much afraid of uh, death? Death is already born along with your uh, birth. Since you have taken your birth, from the very day you have begun to die. Uh, suppose you are now uh, uh, twenty-five years old, that means you have already died twenty-five years. So every moment, every second you are dying, why you should be so much afraid of death? Final death is uh, inevitable. Either you may die today or hundred years after, you cannot avoid death. So why you should be so much afraid? Actually, death means annihilation of the present body. So as soon as the present body is uh, top functioning and mixed with the five elements of material nature, the living entity uh, within the body, according to his own um, action and reaction, uh, accepts uh, another body, and thus keeps up the uh, present uh, body. Just like when a man walks on the street, uh, he steps forward one leg, and when he is uh, uh, confident that his leg is situated in a sound uh, ground, he lifts uh, the other uh, leg. In this way, uh, one after another, uh, body is uh, changed and the soul transmigrates. I have seen how the plant worms uh, change uh, from one twig to another so carefully. Similarly, the living entity uh, changes his body as soon as by higher authority uh, his uh, next body is fixed up. Uh, similarly, uh, a living entity a, so long his condition within this material world, he must have a material body. One after another, simply his particular body is offered by the laws of nature according to his action and reaction in this life. Next, this 
body is exactly like one of the bodies which we always see in dream uh, at uh, during our sleeping dream we uh, create so many uh, bodies according to the uh, mental uh, creation uh, just like we have seen gold and also seen a, a mountain so in dream we can see a golden mountain by combining the two ideas uh, similarly uh, uh, sometimes we see that we have got a body uh, which is flying in the sky at that time we completely forget of our present body uh, similarly uh, these bodies are changing and uh, when you have got a separate body we forget our past body uh, just like uh, uh, during dream we see uh, um, contact with so many new kinds of body but when you are awake we forget all those bodies actually this material body is creation of our uh, mental uh, activities and at the present moment we do not recall it uh, what was our past body next was the nature of mind is uh, flickering sometimes accept something and immediately rejects this something so such accepting and rejecting process in contact with the uh, five objects of sense gratification namely uh, form uh, taste smell sound and touch uh, so um, the mind in uh, um, in its speculative way when comes in touch with such objects of sense gratification uh, he living entity a desire a particular type of body and he gets it therefore the body is uh, an offering by the laws of material nature and uh, the living entity accepts her body and come out again uh, in the material world for enjoying or suffering according to the construction of the body unless we have got a particular type of body we uh, cannot enjoy or suffer uh, according to our mental con- concoction in the previous life actually uh, a particular type of body is offered to us uh, according to the mental condition at the time of death it was the luminous uh, planets like the sun moon or the uh, stars uh, reflect themselves in different a uh, type of reservoir like water oil uh, ghee the reflection moves according to the movement of the reservoir the reflection of moon is on the water uh, the moving water takes the moon also moving actually the moon is not moving similarly the living entity by mental concoction uh, attains different types of body actually the living entity has no connection with such body but an account of illusion being uh, enchanted uh, by the influence of maya the living entity uh, thinks that he belongs to that particular body that is the way of condition line suppose a living entity is now in a human form of uh, body so he thinks that he belongs to the human uh, community or a particular country particular place and he identifies himself in that way and unnecessarily prepares for another body which is not required by him but such desires and mental concoctions are the causes of different types of body the covering influence of material nature is so strong that the living entity whatever body he gets he is satisfied and he identifies with that body with great pleasure therefore i beg to request you not to be overwhelmed by the dictation of your mind and body if you actually want your answer
Krishna, tape number three. Vasudev thus requested Bansa not to be envious uh, to his newly married um, sister. Uh, why sister? Uh, one should not be envious to anyone because this uh, enviousness is the cause of fearfulness uh, both uh, in this world and as well as in the next world uh, before the Jamaraj. Vasudev appealed to Kansa on behalf of Devaki, uh, stating that uh, she was uh, his younger sister and she is just on an auspicious moment on account of her marriage and younger sister or younger brother are considered as one's uh, children. So uh, the position being so delicate, uh, if you kill her, it will go against your high uh, reputation. That's why thus Vasudev try to pacify Kansa uh, by uh, methods of uh, good instruction as well as uh, by differentiation. But Kansa was uh, not to be uh, pacified uh, because his association was uh, demonic. Uh, although he was born in a uh, very high royal family, still on account of his demonic association, he was also a demon. Uh, a demon never cares uh, for any good instruction. It's like a thief. However, you can give him uh, moral instruction. It, it, it is uh, not effective upon a determined thief. Similarly, those uh, who are demonic by nature, atheistic by nature, uh, hardly they can uh, assimilate any good instruction, however uh, authorized they may be. That is the difference between uh, demigod and demon. Uh, those who can accept good instruction and try to behave in their life in that way, they are called demigods. And those who are unable to take such good instruction, they are called uh, demons. Vasudev have a feeling in his attempt to pacify uh, Kansa. Uh, he thought within himself uh, how to protect his wife uh, Devaki. When uh, there is uh, imminent danger, an intelligent person should try to avoid uh, such dangerous position as far as possible by good intelligence and uh, in spite of uh, endeavoring by all uh, intelligence, if one fails to avoid any dangerous position, uh, there is no fault on his part. Jatne kriti jadina siddhati. One should try his best to uh, execute his, uh, his duties, but in spite of all endeavor, if uh, the attempt fails, he has no uh, fault. Vasudev thought it wise uh, for the present. Uh, let me save the life of uh, Devaki. Uh, then, uh, later on, uh, if there are uh, children, uh, I shall see how to save them. He thought within himself, if in future I get one child who can kill uh, Kansa, as Kansa was thinking, uh, then uh, both Devoki and the child uh, would be saved, uh, because the law of providence is uh, inconceivable. Somewhere or other, let me now save the life of Devoki. There is no certainty how a living entity contacts a certain type of body 
as much as there is no certainty how the blazing fire come in contact uh, with a certain uh, type of wood uh, in the forest. When there is a forest fire, it is experienced that the uh, blazing fire sometimes overlaps one tree and catches another tree, uh, influenced by the uh, wind blowing at that time. Uh, similarly, a, a living entity uh, who may be uh, very careful in the matter of uh, executing his duties, uh, still it is very difficult to know what type of uh, body is going to get uh, next life. Uh, just like Maharaj Bharat, he was very faithful executing the duties of self-realization, but by chance uh, in, he contacted uh, a temporary affection for a deer, and he had to uh, accept next life the body of a deer. Thus, Vasudev, after mature deliberation, how to save his wife, again began to say uh, with great respect to Kansa, although he was the most sinful man, uh, it sometimes happens that a, a person like Vasudev, the most uh, virtuous person, has to flatter a person like Kansa the most vicious person. So that is the way of our diplomatic uh, transaction. And uh, Vasudev, although he was deeply aggrieved within himself, outwardly he presented himself as a smiling. Thus he addressed to the uh, shameless Kansa because he was uh, so much Atrocious, Vasudev said to Kansa, my dear brother-in-law, uh, now just consider uh, that uh, you have no danger from your sister. Uh, if you are awaiting some danger, as you have uh, heard uh, a voice of foretelling from the sky, so uh, you are um, confronted with the sons of your sister. The sons of your sister are not uh, present. Who knows, there may be uh, sons or there may not be sons. Uh, considering all this um, position, you are uh, safe for the present and uh, there is no cause of um, fearing from your sister. Now, uh, if there are uh, sons born, of your sister, I promise uh, that I shall present all of them to you uh, for your necessary action. If a Kansa knew the uh, value of the word of honor from Vasudev, and he was convinced uh, by his argument, uh, so uh, for that time he uh, pleased himself uh, from the uh, heinous action of killing his sister. When Kansa thus stopped uh, such killing business, Vasudev uh, was very pleased and he eulogized the action of Kansa. And in this way uh, he went uh, back to his home. After this, in due course of time, Devaki gave uh, birth to eight children, as well as one daughter, uh, year after year. So when the first son was uh, born, Vasudev, to uh, keep his word of honor, immediately brought the child before Kansa. It is said that Vasudev was very much celebrated uh, for his word of honor, and he wanted to continue 
the standard of his fame. Although it was very painful for Vasudev to hand over the newly born child in the hands of Kansa, uh, Kansa was very much uh, glad to receive the child, but he became a little uh, compassionate with the behavior of Vasudev. This instance of Vasudev's behavior with Kansa is very exemplary because uh, for a uh, great soul like Vasudev, there is uh, nothing uh, considered to be painful in course of discharging uh, the duty. A learned person like Vasudev uh, carries on duties uh, without being hesitant. On the other hand, uh, what is uh, abominable action for a demoniac person like Kansa. He said, therefore, that saintly person can tolerate all kinds of uh, miserable condition of uh, life. A, a learned man uh, can discharge his duties without waiting for any uh, favorable circumstances. And a heinous person like Kansa can act any sinful activity, and a devotee can sacrifice anything uh, for uh, satisfying the Supreme Personality of God. By this action of Vasudev, uh, Kansa, although he was uh, demoniac, uh, he became so much satisfied and was surprised to see Vasudev uh, stop in his... Uh, promise, thus being compassionate upon him and pleased, uh, he began to say as follows. Kansa said, uh, My dear Vasudev, uh, you need not present this child to me because I have no uh, danger from this uh, child. I have heard that uh, from the eighth uh, child born of uh, you and uh, Devaki uh, would uh, kill me. So why shall I uh, accept this child unnecessarily? You can uh, take him back. After this, when Vasudev was going back with his firstborn child, uh, although he was uh, a little pleased within himself by the behavior of Kansa, still he could not uh, uh, believe him, because he knew uh, Kansa was uncontrolled, atheistic uh, person. Therefore, he cannot be fixed up in his uh, uh, word of honor. In other words, one who cannot control the senses uh, cannot be uh, fixed up in their determination. Uh, there is a saying of one great politician, uh, named Chanaka Pandit, uh, he said that never put your trust to the um, diplomats or uh, to the omen. Otherwise, uh, those who are addicted to unrestricted sense gratification, they can never be uh, truthful. Either uh, they can be trusted with any faith. When Vasudev went uh, away to his home. Uh, at that time, uh, the great sage Narada uh, came to Kansa, and he was informed about Kansa's becoming compassionate with Vasudev and returning his first child. Narada was very much anxious to accelerate the descendants of Lord Krishna as soon as possible. Therefore, he informed Kansa that all personalities like uh, uh, Nanda Maharaj in Vrindavan and all the uh, cowherds, boys, girls, and uh, the wives of the cow, cowherds, men, 
on the one side and the other side, uh, Vasudev, his father, Surasan, and all his relatives uh, born in the family of Brishni, all persons uh, presently known as the descendants of the Jodhu dynasty and their wives, for everyone born in their family at the present moment, their friends and values are, are the uh, demigods uh, taking birth in those uh, families. And he warned Kansa to be careful of them uh, because Kansa and all his friends and uh, advisor there are demons. Uh, demons are always afraid of the uh, demigods. So, after being thus informed by Narada about the uh, appearance of the demigods in different families, he became immediately too much alert and could understand that all the demigods have already appeared uh, and Lord Vishnu must be now uh, coming. At once arrested both his uh, brother-in-law, Vasudev and Devoki, and put them into prison bars. And in this way, Kansa imprisoned Vasudev and his wife, Devoki, within the prison bar, bars, uh, shackled in iron chains, so that they may not go away. And as they were giving birth to a male child, uh, year after year, Kongsa was uh, killing them one after another, thinking all the uh, <coughs> babies as incarnation of uh, Vishnu. He was practically afraid of the eighth child, uh, but after a uh, visit of Narada, he came to the conclusion that any child uh, may be uh, Krishna. Uh, therefore, it was better to kill uh, all the babies who may take birth of uh, Devoki and Vasudev. Next word, this action of Kansa is not very difficult to understand. In the history of the world, there are many instances that uh, uh, persons in the royal order for satisfaction of their uh, ambitions, uh, some of them uh, uh, has killed uh, his father, some of them has killed their brother or the whole family, some of them have killed friends. So uh, for demonic, uh, greedy, uh, royal order, uh, there is uh, nothing astonishing. Uh, they can kill uh, anyone for their nefarious ambition. Come next paragraph. Kansa was aware of his previous birth by the grace of Narada, that in, in, in his previous birth he was a, a demon of the name Kalnemi, and he was killed by uh, Vishnu. And knowing that he, he he had taken his birth now in the Bhojo family, he decided to become deadly enemy of the uh, Jadu dynasty because uh, Krishna was going to take birth in that family and he was very much afraid that he would be killed by Krishna as he was killed uh, in his uh, last birth. Next word. Thus decided he first of all imprisoned his father Ugrasen because he was the chief king amongst the uh, Jodhu dynasty, Bhoja dynasty, Andhak dynasty, thus uh, occupied whole kingdom of Surasen, uh, Vasudev's father.